I was in the Galaxy's Edge uh, Discord server, and somebody asked about uh, the internals to the remote uh, control for the droids you can build at uh, the Droid Depot. And so I took it apart and looked inside and confirmed what they were asking about. But I noticed that you know you have these two little bumps here. And when the remote is on and you're using it, when you press a button, the left bump glows red. But nothing happens with the right bump. And when I opened it up, I saw that there was clearly an LED in here, but there was no LED in here. This is just, a, it was all filled in. It was, didn't do anything. So I thought, well, that's just begging to be modified to have an LED added in there. And after a little bit of thinking, about five seconds worth, I figured that would be great for a power indicator because you turn the remote on and you don't know that you've left it on. It seems like a power indicator might be uh, beneficial. Um, but then, just having a green LED, I decided to go with green, uh, that seemed uh, too easy. Let's Let's make it a little more interesting. And so I wired it up in such a way so that uh, when you press a button and the red LED turns on, the green LED would go out. So there would ever only be one LED on at a given time, just to make it uh, visually interesting. And I came up with this big schematic about how I would do it. About how I would tap off of a, a, a test point that's on the PCB and rig up a PNP transistor and calculated and uh, a base resistor, the LED resistor, and it was a big to-do. And as I was uh, about to uh, do this and explaining my plans to uh, the Makerspace channel on the Discord server, somebody quite correctly pointed out that in this setup that I had, it's only going to draw a milliamp to drive that LED. And the particular LED I have, it, it lights up very bright even with just one milliamp going through it. But it's only one milliamp. The, uh, the I.O. pin on the microcontroller here, when it goes low, it could probably handle sinking or, or allowing one milliamp of current to travel through it to ground. You don't need this transistor setup at all. You could just wire the LED from power into that test point. When the test point is high, it'll turn on the red LED. Uh, when the test point goes low, it'll turn the green LED on. Now, I had already filmed probably 30 minutes of my figuring out what the schematic was going to look like and the decision-making processes involved, and then I got that little note and stewed on it for about five minutes and realized they were absolutely correct. I was overcomplicating things, and so I stopped recording. But I finished the mod, and now I'm going to show you the mod. And instead of a 40-minute ramble, you'll get a, I don't know, 6-7 minute ramble. We'll find out. So I've already removed the screws. Um, I'm going to try and get this top off. It is, despite having the screws removed, still... Right, the screws are removed, yes. It still requires a little bit of force. There we go. Okay. Come on. Almost there. Okay. So the buttons are loose. So make sure the buttons are where they're supposed to be and put that off to the side. And here's the setup. And we're going to get rid of this little piece of captain tape because it's too big. And I'm going to redo these joints. So what you can see here is I have a 3 millimeter green LED right there and if you can see the red heat shrink underneath has a one kilo ohm resistor underneath it and that wire goes all the way over to the positive or the power line so when you turn the switch and or flip the switch and turn it on power goes into that middle pin there power goes up through to the green LED turns it on and flows out to that test point T8, which is connected to the red LED over here. The, so it's just a matter of LED, resistor, and a couple of wires, and connect them to the right point, and that's it. Uh, you will have to drill this, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, drill the hole out because it's filled in. I think a 1 8 inch drill bit is what I wound up using. And then I put some hot glue in there to hold it in place. 
uh, what else? The wire here, the the red wire can just go right over the edge here of the PCB and underneath, and that's fine. The the ground wire, the 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 wire that goes to the uh, cathode of the LED, that you have some trouble. I originally had it going over here, and that got in the way of the of these buttons here, specifically this one. And so when you push down on it, you end up pinching this wire. And if you look close, you'll be able to see an indentation where the wire was squished or squished. So I've rerouted it over here. And so really what I need to do now is reflow the solder on that joint so the wire just kicks up top instead of off to the right like that. Put some tape down and be good to go. Um, I didn't want to route it over here to these pegs here because you can see there is no space. There's the hole where the pegs go in and then the buttons are right next to it. But if we go over here we can see we've got much more space. At least that's the theory anyways with how this was done. Your mileage may vary but again if you want to wire this up yourself don't do it the complicated way. You have your battery, you have your microcontroller, which is that little job right there. You have your T8 test point, which is focus. I'll make you focus. Or I'll just zoom in. Here's your test point. That goes to the uh, negative side of your LED. Throw in a 1000 ohm resistor, either side of the LED, doesn't matter. And then the positive side of the LED needs to go to the power from right there. That is your mod. Oh, I should probably show it to you in action now. Well, one moment, let me put this back together. Before I show you it in action, let me show you how I rerouted it. I've redone the solder joints, put some tape, some better position tape there. Now I'll put everything back together. All back together. I'll put my finger up here so you can see the light better. You can see when I press the button, green light goes out, red light turns on, and when I turn the remote off completely, the green light disappears. That is my green light droid controller mod.